Greetings! Um, this is going to be another vlog about Sweden, so there's not going to be any gameplay involved in here. Uh, so if you're interested in gameplay, you might want to skip this, or not, if you want to find out what it's like to move to another country. So I'm going to try to remember um, what happened in October when I was here last, uh, because that's where I was going to make my next vlog talking about the problems we had and things like that. So I'm gonna to try to remember that at the moment. Um, we, so I came with the intention of finding an apartment and also uh, figuring out how to pay for it, like getting a bank account, getting a phone number, SIM card for Sweden and all of that kind of stuff. And um, I had read online that Anybody, uh, even if you're not a citizen, any foreign person can buy property in Sweden. So I thought, okay, no problem. And then um, <clears throat> with the SIM card, I thought, I talked to somebody and because they're kind of tr trying to crack down on terrorism and stuff, they don't let you buy a SIM card unless you have a uh, person number. Uh, it's kind of like a Swedish social social security number and you have to have this card and you have to have a Swedish bank account and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, okay, let's see if we can get a bank account. Um, and well, we talked to the bank and no, because I'm an American citizen, apparently they make it a lot more difficult to get a bank account. And I, I don't understand why. And I still haven't been given any, any reasonable explanation for doing so. Um, and they, they just outright don't have an explanation. They just say, well, you know, because, oh my God, there's a, that kind of like glare on my glasses. That's like a, oh, it's a reflection of my phone. How interesting. I'll try to keep that out. <laughs> Jeez. All right. I'll hold the phone upward a little bit. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, we still haven't figured out why I, why it's different for American citizens. Um, but there, I'm like, okay, well, I have this EU passport. I am a Polish citizen. Oh, that's great. Oh, and I also have an American citizen. Oh, that's a problem. I'm like, really, really? So um, anyway, so they say, well, it's a lot easier. Have you applied for a person number? And I said, well, no, not yet. They said, well, if you apply and get rejected, then we might be able to help you, but try to apply first. So I'm like, all right, fine. And um, oh, now I'm using body language with my hands and my hands are not in front of the phone, they're behind the phone. I don't have any like uh, my little cell phone mount with me that's coming with my my stuff in my container. So anyway, um, anyway, so we uh, so I apologize if the, the video is it shouldn't be shaky. I'm, I'm, anyway, I have my elbow on a pillow. <laughs> Anyway, um, so we go and apply for a thing, and it's not the person number, which is the person number. It is a samordnings number, uh, which is like um, a precursor to getting the person number. It's like a thing that immigrants have to apply for before they get the better person number. Um, and so... Uh, we apply for that and we're like, well, okay, we, we want to, we, you know, we want to get this bank account in the next couple of weeks because I want to start transferring money uh, over from the U.S. And uh, they're like, oh, well, it's going to take maybe one to three months. And I'm like, uh, that's not great because, you know, I've got to pay for this apartment in December got to pay for the apartment in December because that's the closing date. They were able to let me wire money to the broker's uh, account uh, and the, the escrow account to pay for like, they have like a down payment of 10%. And so I was able to pay that. But with the other, they say you have to have a bank account. I'm like, okay, why? Why exactly? Um, I still haven't had any any reasonable explanation for that either. Um, and I was like, well, if I can't get a bank account in time, what do I do? And and all this other kind of stuff. So, so we we had this. Oh 
God, problem solving over the last few days and or over the last, well, when I was here in October, we had, we tried to solve this problem. We thought about things and um, Matthias was kind enough to lend me a bank account that he had that was empty. Um, and he, he called the tax authority, said, you know, is it okay if, you know, my girlfriend transfers money into there and they're like, well, yeah, it's fine. You just, you know, when, when it comes tax time, just explain it. Um, because you know, they don't, he doesn't want it to count as personal income because it's not his income anyway. It's my money and it's going to be used for my apartment. Um, but that's the only way we could figure to get the money into the country, um, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh. There's a big like crackdown on uh, money laundering, but you know since I have all the paperwork where the money came from and all of that kind of stuff, it's it's not. I mean it's 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 clean. It's I have a paper trail. Um, so, um, but yeah, again, the the whole like if you are planning to move to this country from America, be warned. Come ahead of time. Do not buy an apartment first thing because you have many roads to travel. Um, so anyway, that was what was going to, to happen. And so I, I did not get the, the coordination number before I left Sweden. I, I went back to the U S for another two and a half weeks. Um, but that was kind of, <laughs> kind of what happened. So, um, it's, it's been difficult. I did find a good apartment. It's really nice. Again, I was asked to pay 10% on the apartment to, to hold the contract. And, um, let's see what else informationally can I give you? That was pretty, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty okay. The other thing that they have here is in America, typically when you buy an apartment or a house or a condo, um, you can take possession immediately. But that's not how it is in Sweden. They have a minimum of one month for the broker to sort things out, I think. Because as I understand it, the um, the person who owns the apartment was already out of the house. They were living somewhere else. So it wasn't an issue of them getting out. But in general, Swedes have one to three months to be able to get out of the property and find something else. Um, so again, it's, um, you kind of have to plan like way, way, way ahead of time in Sweden. If you're going to do stuff, I think they expect people to, uh, I don't know what they expect people to do because apparently rentals are really difficult to come by. Um, so I don't know what they expect people to do, but that's been my experience. So I'll go ahead and end this vlog here. I have more to say and uh, we'll, we'll get there, but I, I kind of want to do this by topic or by time period. So the next vlog will be about my, um, my experience back in the States with moving. Yay. So anyway, thank you so very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you next time.